top producers are not doing all the work themselves. If you want to transform your income into wealth, you can't be a DIY guy. I'm Justin Hitt with Sustainable Wealth Secrets. First off, the reason you're making a big income is because you deliver something of value to a corporation, to a business, to a conglomerate, to, to a lobbyist group, to somebody who has the money to spend for what it is that you have to offer. They are not paying you for the administrative activities that are necessary for you to have those skills. They're not paying you for training. They're not paying you for your certifications. They're not paying for, you, for your degree. They're paying for results. Now, is it possible for you to get hired by somebody and be in a business where you are being paid just for who you are? Yes. Just because you showed up, there are some industries who will pay you, but they won't pay you big dollars. So, for example, McDonald's, the person who stands at the register, they can hire a computer or they can hire a kid. They aren't paying big dollars for the person standing at the register because it's easy to replace. Now, you might think because you get paid big money, three times the average salary of your region, you might get a six-figure income, that what you have is difficult to replace. But I will tell you, the experiments that we've done recently with, inter, uh, with artificial intelligence, the tools that we use in-house, my experience over the years helps me understand that everyone is easy to replace. Now, this is not something where I'm advocating you work a bunch of extra hours and you kind of kiss the boss's ass and you do everything possible not to get fired and you do whatever they tell you to do because you know as a fact that you could be working a six-figure job today and you could be six months later with no income still because you got laid off. Companies often make decisions not because of the individuals, but they make it because of the larger numbers. And there's trends and in, in things. So, for example, when outsourcing was a big thing and offshoring was a big thing, there was a lot of really talented people who lost their jobs in the United States, who lost their jobs in the UK, who lost their jobs across Canada, who lost their jobs in other places where they thought they had a stable income. Now, unfortunately, many of them were in major cities and they went bankrupt right away. It was a horrible situation. I, I remember the stories coming in from newsletter subscribers. But again, the subscribers who used the strategies to convert their income into net worth, surplus savings, surplus investment, surp all this stuff that the government tells you you shouldn't have, you should have it. If they tell you that if you have uh, unaccumulated income, you should have it. If they tell you, you that the, the uh, generational wealth is bad, you should have it. If they tell you that uh, having uh, passive income is bad, you should have it. Because again, when bad things happen, if you don't have these other streams of income coming in, if you don't have these other means of service, then you're going to be in a, a big, bad situation. So very often we talk about it rather than being an employee, we talk about being an entrepreneur. Now, a lot of people who are employers are actually slaves to their business because they got to be there every day. All their income is, in, is active. They've got to manage a lot of people that don't know what they're doing. Um, and, and when they shift to the entrepreneurial mindset, they very often find life is easier, cleaner. It's faster to convert income into uh, net worth or wealth. So how do we do this? First off, an entrepreneur solves problems. What is the big problem you're solving in the marketplace that's going to help you transform business relationships into profits? What do I mean by that? Well, just because you know how to do something doesn't mean other people know enough about your skill set and the benefit of your skill set to hire you. So whether you're working in a career as a W-2 employee, whether you're working as a contractor or, or 1099 uh, contractor, whether you're a consultant, whether you're not, none of that matters. You are you incorporated. I first heard that from Brian Tracy and the way he described it made so much sense to me back when I was uh, in my early twenties that I am a freelancer, whether I work for a company or I work for someone else, I always work for myself. So that means that in my household and in my day-to-day -day activities, I have to do smart, business th business things and make decisions about my time, my attention, and my resources, which includes money, in order to maximize my value to the customer, to the marketplace, and so that I can continue with opportunity. But I must also understand that the customer is temporal, 
and they can come and go as they please because they have choice in the marketplace. Now, I'm not going to go crazy. Uh, you know, again, I'm not going to kiss their butt. I'm not going to go and, and, you know, if they're a bad customer, I'm getting rid of them. But I've got to have other options in the wings. So we talk about always looking for a new job. Mentor told me this. I didn't pay attention to him. It kicked me in the ass several times. But this is the strategy my mentor passed along to me that always works. It is always be looking for new work. You came looking for a job and you're going to leave looking for a job. But wouldn't it be better is if you already had an opportunity to go to even if you didn't need it. So you're going to network with your recruiters. You're going to network with potential hiring managers. You're going to network with peers in the industry. Now, that's a lot of work. It takes time and effort. But if something comes up in the marketplace that's better than what you have, you can move. If something comes up in the marketplace that is is interesting and you can you can learn about it, you can use it to discover information about how you can be more valuable in where the position you're at right now. Now, employers and human resources are going to tell you that they don't want you doing this because, again, it's very expensive to replace good people. But good people find opportunities that work best for them. Now, it's almost a part-time job cultivating these relationships. I know you get into the fires and the, you got your head down at the office and you're just grinding away. And next thing you know, it's five years later. And inflation-wise, you're making half of what you were hired for. Your salaries are behind 20 to 30% of what someone else is coming in into the same business. And, and the, the company's got to pay. And you're, you're feeling kind of stuck because your skills, and, and I've been there, Networking skills, resume skills, self-promotion skills, uh, positioning yourself as an expert in the marketplace. You might know how to do it, but if you're out of practice, there's a ramp-up period. So I've even written a book called Establish Instant Credibility, where I put together all my notes, techniques, and methods that I've used in order to establish credibility in the marketplace, as well as what other experts have used to build that, but I focused on passive ways. Because I do understand that when you're doing a, a very, you know, they're paying you six figures to be there, to be responsive, and ultimately uh, do the work that's necessary, and that, that doesn't necessarily leave you a lot of free time. I do want you to spend time with family. I do want you to spend time with hobbies. Your health is just as important as your wealth, because health is an aspect of wealth. But those networks and relationships are also an aspect of wealth. So how do we find balance? How do we make that happen? Here's the next tip. We do that by understanding that we ourselves, even though we're independent, even though we're seeking financial independence for our family, even though we're seeking personal independence and the ability to do the things that we want, we're still dependent on a marketplace around us as well as our community. So we deliberately manage our community to surround ourselves with the people that we know, like, and trust or people that can give us excellent advice you know, you don't have to trust your lawyer to get good advice from them. Uh, we surround ourselves with the right advisors, coaching, the people who can counseling, even in many cases, the people who can guide us in a direction that is going to help us reach our goals and objectives. That means we also have goals and objectives. But we also understand that if I'm supposed to be doing X, I've got a private client that's paying me $150,000, $250,000 a year, then I can't be doing things like mowing my lawn. Now, if I'm mowing my lawn for exercise, that's great. Mow the lawn. Otherwise, there are thousands of landscaping services who are experts at mowing lawn, and they can mow the lawn for you. I don't need to be doing cleaning the house. Okay? Somebody can clean the house. I can pay them a fraction of what I make per hour. I could, They're going to do a better job. They're going to have two or three people cleaning the house. I, I need to be spending time on these relationships. I need to be spending time on my skill set, making sure that the right people know I have these skills. I need to be spending time on serving the people who already are paying me. So there are a variety of things that you can do to hire out other people. Now, I have gone as far because I, I own a couple of newsletters. That's my passive income source, even though it's not the you know as as much income as I make on my my client work or my or, you know working for a corporation. It is a way that I hone my skills, establish credibility, and build up the body of knowledge that makes me more valuable in the workplace. But that doesn't mean I got to edit out of every article. That doesn't mean that beyond recording a podcast, I need to go promote it on every channel or write the social media posts or chop up the podcast episode to make YouTube shorts or something. I can get a team to do that. Now, you may not have the money to hire people, but 
the way the math works is if you can hire somebody to do what you do at a 60% efficiency, because I know a lot of you folks say, I can't hire people to do what I do. Well, that's fine, because as soon as you can, then your job's a commodity. <laughs> but there are things that you do every day, like research, like uh, schedule management, like scheduling doctor's appointments, uh, like paperwork around the house, bookkeeping and accounting. Uh, there's, the, you know, I mentioned the lawn care, the home repairs, all that kind of stuff. There are people who can do it for a fraction of what you do with at least a 60% efficiency. Now, I'm not talking about replacing hobbies. I'm talking about necessary maintenance and repairs that can be done by managing a household rather than being managed by the household. Or worse, letting the repairs get out of the, out of way and you know causing a, an additional expense in the future. There are people you can hire to do these things. Now, does it take time to manage contractors to do work? Yes, it does. But the skill of managing contractors is worth more than the skill of doing the work. So you focus on the skill of managing the contractors, you build up your project management skills, your program management skills, and then you apply that in the marketplace to get paid more. The additional income will more than cover the work done by a specialist. Now, here's the deal. That specialist isn't going to do the work at a 60% efficiency. They're going to do the work, unless you're cheap and you buy a crappy, get a crappy contractor, but that specialist is going to do the work at a multiple of the value in which you could do the work. OK, if you're going to take a weekend and watch a bunch of YouTube videos to fix your washer and dryer. And you're going to spend all weekend with your washer and dryer all over the floor. And rather than spending time with your kids, rather than spending time with your, your family, rather than, uh, enjoy, you know, replenishing your your energy levels by enjoying a hobby, you're down in the basement taking apart a washer and dryer. Then you've you, you, unless you enjoy it, you've wasted time money, resources. You've taken income and squandered it rather than investing it in the solutions that you need. If you have a washer and dryer in your house and you're doing laundry, because yeah, I fold laundry watching TV sometimes. You know, if I want to watch a show, I fold a little laundry. You know, it makes me look like I'm useful. Um, but it, most of the time, uh, when a laundry service is available, I'll drop my laundry off and let them fold it. Because they'll do it as like seven, I think it was like seven bucks a pound, 14 bucks a pound. I don't remember, but I don't have that many pounds of laundry. My point being is there's a whole bunch of stuff that you're doing every day that you didn't manufacture your own car. You didn't manufacture your own house. There are certain things like maintenance service, uh, care items that can be taken care of by somebody else. Now, do you hire a nanny or drop your kids off at daycare or something like that? I don't think that's the best thing. I think when it comes to family members, when it comes to, uh, you know, your, your relationship, you know, don't, don't send your wife to the spa when you can go out and have a weekend together. Uh, you want to invest in the relationship. You want to invest in the career skills. You want to invest in the outcomes. And if the outcome is a well-maintained home. You can do that by having a smaller home that needs less maintenance. You could do that by hiring contractors, or you can do that by the, uh, the the arrangement you have for home. Are you renting it versus owning it? Do you see where I'm coming from here? So you are independent, yet you are dependent. The skills necessary to do high-paying income are unique skills, and th they pay. So get paid. But these other commodity skills can be done by other people who very often have better proficiency than you. They can do it while you're doing something else. And as long as you're thoughtful about this, so if it would take you, uh, you know, I, we use the every hour rate. So it would take you 10 hours to do something and your every hour rate is uh, $27 an hour. That's $270. If you can hire somebody for $50 to do the work, you have an upside. This is critical, folks. Stop wasting time, money, resources, and attention doing stuff somebody else can do. You're, in fact, circulating that money into the economy, building up other people, opening up new opportunities, while focusing on the core areas in which you know you have value in the marketplace. Now, if you start realizing that what you do is losing value due to artificial intelligence, due to offshoring, due to automation... Do other things. Don't fight that stuff. You want to have that the free time available to, to meditate and think about 
what's that next level? See, I went from computer repair to systems administration to, uh, to uh, enterprise systems administration, uh, which included, then be, included risk management to risk management and compliance. And I moved to where the work needed my skill set. I didn't worry about getting laid off. I've been laid off more than a few times. Um, but ultimately, when you're making a premium income, the business has got to do that. Now, I wasn't the only one laid off. If you're the only one laid off, you're fired. Uh, if if you know, like lay off whole teams of people sometimes in some of these corporations. But again, that's why we have the backstops. That's why we have the investments. That's why we're managing our money, income, and expenses. That's how you transform your income into wealth. I'm Justin Hit with Sustainable Wealth Secrets. Keep sending in those questions to www.sustainablewealthsecrets.com. Visit the contact page and just ask your questions there. Or go to the newsletter page and join our newsletter to get more insights, ideas, and concepts about turning your income into wealth. Now, the whole secret of this is the things that we discussed today will not only turn your income into wealth, it'll help you create assets that cash flow and you increase the amount of income that you have because you'll be able to think more clearly and focus on the outcomes that are necessary to get results. By the way, if you want to get a copy of my book, Establish Instant Credibility, uh, there should be a link on that same website. Uh, the book is called Establish Instant Credibility, uh, how to build the authority and credibility uh, that you need in any area of expertise in order to be the in-demand professional. Uh, and that's by me, Justin Hitt, with Sustainable Wealth Secrets. I'll see you in the next podcast.